between standard blocks. So if I click on this button, it loads up another section of the user interface where I can specify a standard block of two trackers up by, say, 10 trackers across. And then I can define the width of any access roads around those standard blocks. So I'm going to put in a 10 meter access road going east to west. And then the column spacing, uh, by default, it will give you an access road that will basically leave no extra space. It'll just be equal to the pitch of the trackers. But you can override it if I wanted a 10 meter access road. I can put that here or not. I can just leave it by default and it'll default to the to the column spacing. So let's just do that for now. Then my next option, if I choose to, is I can reserve space for an equipment pad in each standard block. So here I'm going to go in and reserve a 10 by 20 uh, equipment pad spacing. I'm going to put it in the top right corner of every standard block. I'm going to mirror it from block to block. And then when, once I've defined that, it'll automatically include uh, the that's basic in each of my standard blocks. Once well, all that is done, I'm going to insert installation areas. That's what we call our standard blocks. So this is the size of one, two, two trackers up by 10 trackers across. And you can see that when I do my layout of my standard blocks, it leaves the equipment pads in the corners and mirrored as I expect. You can also see that I have an access road of uh, 10 meters in my east-west direction. And then in our south direction, the access road just preserves the road row to row spacing. Now, I don't have to stick with just this default layout. I can delete any of these blocks I don't want to use. I can also uh, resize them. So if I pick one, I can just grab it and I can resize it. I can move the equipment uh, pads around. If I don't like where they end up, I can move them around manually. So I can totally adjust where my standard blocks are going to end up within the drawing. And then once I'm satisfied with my standard block layout, and then go back and uh, overlay the actual layout of all the trackers. And this is a, a much faster way of manipulating the drawing than if you're going to try and manipulate, you know, the 500,000 individual module squares uh, in AutoCAD. It would, it would just really bog them. This is going to allow me to do about a 100 megawatt site uh, really quickly and end up with a drawing that's much easier to manipulate and around in inside the AutoCAD environment. So there's my layout, and once it's done, I can uh, quickly go over to the Summary tab, and we'll see that this is a 93 megawatt layout with uh, over 4,000 trackers and over 360,000 individual solar modules that we've been able to do just really quickly in the software. You can see here how the layout algorithm places either partial or full trackers, depending what there is space for respecting the setbacks from obstructions and also the equipment pads and the bound side boundary as well. So it'll automatically go in and put full trackers or partial trackers, um, assuming you specify that you want to allow for partial trackers in your layout. Now again, the software gives the ability to custom manipulate the layout that's generated, so you can delete trackers from the layout if you want to. And you can also edit the layout by adding trackers uh, back in. So if I click Add Tracker, specify either full or partial. If I say partial, I can say, do I want to remove the string from the north or the south side of that tracker? And then I pick a, a starting point, and then I can drag out uh, more trackers of that size back into my layout. If you want more fine control over where trackers are placed, um, then you can use the click and drag feature to really place trackers with more precision rather than in these standard blocks, including the ability to install trackers following a reference angle, like an angled layout. So now I'm going to do another example. I'm going to use um, user defined, which means I'm going to specify some more boxes where I put in my string length and the number of strings per tracker and how much trackers stick out past the end of the last module and column gaps and things like this, just to define the geometry that otherwise comes preloaded when I, when I pick the next tracker. And then I'm going to um, use the click and drag feature to insert my trackers. First thing we'll ask you is what length of tracker you want to insert, whether it's the full three string tracker or partial tracker. And then it'll ask you what angle to use. And here I'm just going to use a, a default angle, which is just a square array, not an angled layout. I can then use the shift tab key to pick my insertion point and then drag out using click and drag an area of trackers. Next, let me show you how to insert a partial tracker. So again, I'll click and drag. This time I'll pick a two string partial tracker. It'll ask me if I want to take it from north to south. Again, default square layout. Pick my insertion point and just drag out um, a row of, of partial trackers. 
And then the next thing I'll show you is how to do uh, an angled layout. So you see how this, this particular plot kind of angles up and to the right. So again, click and drag. I'm going to pick three string trackers. And this time I'm going to pick reference angle. And I'm going to click two points along the line that I want to reference as my angle. And then when I insert the first tracker and I drag, it'll actually follow that reference angle as I insert the trackers. Um, it would be smart enough as well if I add trackers to these existing trackers to keep that same reference angle. So if I hit add tracker and I say full three string trackers and I, I pick a tracker and drag it out, um, you'll see the trackers that I add get added at that same reference angle automatically. Uh, and then finally, here is uh, what it looks like when I add a partial tracker at a reference angle. So again, click and drag. Just for fun, let's use a one-string tracker on the smallest partial available. Um, I'm going to pick my, pick it from the south end, of the, and then pick my reference angle here, and then I can just drag it out, and it'll follow the reference angle. So, using click and drag, you can get really, really granular control over the shape of your of your layout, and including uh, including any layouts. And then, if you're using Next Tracker for your layouts, you can actually insert next tracker specific manufacturer blocks uh, into the layout. So again, I'll go over here, I'll hit the insert manufacturer block. We actually have the entire next tracker block library and we'll put all their blocks in uh, along with all the, the peer locations and whether they're regular or heavy peers, which is useful for estimating project costs as well.